Once again, we live in the pandemic year of uh, 2020. Crazy year in the year of our Lord. Since our Lord and Savior, the Black Christ, has risen. Uh, over a thousand... 700, I mean, 900 and something, 30, well, he died in 33, you know, in the year of our Lord, he was 33 years old when, when he died, okay, so we in what's called in the Bible, the last days and times, you know, and um, I'm a Bible reader, I break down the Bible, I study the Bible and so forth like that, they call me Brother Shump, um, my name actually is Samuel, but um, in the Bible, the word Samuel in Hebrew is Shamawa Alaga. So, you know, the Israelites I ran with, they chopped my name up in many different ways. So they call me Shum, Sham, or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I'm cool with it. So I just use Brother Shum. I got a YouTube channel called Brother Shum's Corner. Check it out. Check it out, Brother Shum's Corner. I'm be breaking stuff down, you know, on YouTube, Brother Shum's Corner. You know, I'm be breaking stuff down and going in live, uh, posting a lot of videos. Lord bless, you know, if that's my destiny. So tonight, you know, taking it all from the basics again um, of my father, you know, and uh, just breaking it down. I know I want to, you know, teach about him and his son and uh, where we are. So in time, we are in what's called the last days and times right now or the latter days, you know. Uh, and what's coming down is. The next thing that's coming in time is called the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is the third world's war. That's that's what's coming, the third world's war. And then we move on into the kingdom of, of the Savior. And all these things is written in the Bible. That's the destiny. Right now, we in the kingdom of the wicked under Esau. And uh, Esau is the so-called white man, European, Caucasian. Uh, in the Bible, he's called the Edomites. Uh, he's the child of the devil. Uh, be before, before, um, before the flood, he was a black man by the name of Cain who killed his brother Abel, the first murder upon the planet. So I'm breaking down stuff quickly. You know, th this is my intro uh, into things, and um, we on the other side of the flood now. We on the other side of the flood. And uh, the same play before the flood is, a, is the same play that's going on now. So before the flood, you had Cain and Abel, and you had the Gentiles, which is the other nations in Genesis 1 verse 26. And uh, Cain became the children of the devil, or the children of the wicked one. You understand? And his kids uh, became wicked, and they began to overrun everybody else. And um, Enos... And Seth brought forth the children of God, which is the children of the Most High, the righteous children. And, um, you know, that's how the balance came back between good and evil. But then what began to happen was evil began to overrun the whole earth, just like evil is overrunning the whole earth now. You know, and things is becoming more and more wicked. So you got to hold your zone. You got to understand this game that's going down. You got to understand this game and uh, know your parts, know your pieces. But there's only one way for you to understand this game. There's only one way for you to understand this game. You have to get up into the scripture book. So the scripture book is going to give you the parts, the Bible, right? And the Apocrypha is going to give you the parts that you must play, that things, pieces that are being played upon the world stage right now. You know, uh, everything that you see going on is uh, written in the Bible. It's for you to go figure it out, right? It's, it's for you to go figure it out. So I'm going to read a couple of verses Be you know, before we get into something. Um, so we, basic verses, basic verses, if you go to Isaiah 34, verse 16. Everything is keep kiss, which is keep it simple, stupid. Everything is kiss. In Isaiah 34, 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Well, what are we reading from the Bible? That's the book. It didn't say other books. What, what do I mean other books? This is the Bhagavad Vita. This is the Egyptian Bible. I mean, the Indian Bible. This is what the Hindus and Krishna and all these people that are converted or believe in this stuff. This is what they believe in. So this is like a Bible for them. So he didn't say other books. He didn't say this record right here. Okay. 
Then there's the book called the Quran, which is by the Muslims and stuff like that, under Islam and the Arabs. Okay, this is by the Arabs under under Muhammad. But yet in the Bible it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It didn't say other books, it didn't say other records. Okay, so you ain't supposed to go digging into other records. And then he said, and read. It says, No one of these shall fail. And none shall want her mate. What does it mean? No one of these shall fail. None of the prophecies shall fail that he has written from Genesis to Revelation. There's prophecies which become destiny from Genesis to Revelation. When he writes a prophecy through a man upon the earth, it becomes the destiny of whoever he's writing it to, whether it is now or later. Okay? So what you have to do is you have to pay attention to it no one of these shall fail no prophecy shall fail everything that he said is going to go down through a prophet and the prophets is the ones that wrote the scriptures there's no prophets walking the earth holy prophets walking the earth L let me clear this up right now there is no man or woman people say that they're prophets but these are all false prophets out here these are all false prophets and false teachers and liars that are out here so you better be clear all the, the holy people that the Lord chose to write the scriptures is already dead because the book is already finished, okay? That's why the Savior tell you that in the last days, there's going to be many false prophets. L let me prove that. Let's go in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. So you good? You, 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 you good, Kima? Yes, sir. Stay with me now. So we're doing it. So, showing you that there's many false prophets, right? This Matthew 24 chapter, the disciples who were prophets also asked them, well, what shall be the sign of thy coming? Matthew 24 verse 1. Go ahead, read that, Kima. Matthew 24 verse 1 down. Okay, Matthew 24. So, you got to stay with me on that, right? Because I might be calling on you. All right. And the Savior went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Come on. And the Savior said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another. That shall not be thrown down. So the Savior was given a prophecy of Rome coming in 70 AD. Now, Rome had already dominated the whole world. But now Rome, he was saying Rome was going to come to wipe out Jerusalem. Okay, so he's given a future prophecy to, the, to Israel. You're going to get wiped out in 70 AD. That's why he's saying this temple shall be, shall be taken down. Okay, read on. See that? So they asked him three questions. Tell us, what shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming now, his return, and the end of the world? So they were talking about, they thought that the world of Israel was going to be, be based on prophecy that's written in Isaiah and all these records, that Israel was going to be put back on top. Because Israel has always been told that they're going to be put back on top. Let's prove that, that that's what they wanted, right? Let's go in the book of Acts. Let's go in the book of Acts. Let's let's prove that. Let's go in the book of Acts, the first chapter and the sixth verse. What did they want? What did the disciples want from the Savior? What is it that they saw in the prophecies from Malachi back? In What is it that Israel always wanted? Acts, the first chapter and the sixth verse. Check this out. Hello? When they therefore come, on. come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See that? So when he had risen from the grave, when he had risen from the grave, they knew that he was the power. 
So they were saying, now that you have risen, will you now take down the nations and put us back in charge? The kingdom, that's what we were created for as Israelites. We were created to rule this world. This world were created for us to rule this world. How do we know that? Let's drop everything. Let's go what we were created for, right? Let's go what we were created for, right? This is what they thought he was going to do at that point, but they didn't understand his purpose at that point. Let's go into the book of um, Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. Let's go into the Exodus. Let's go into the book of Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. Let's see what we were created for. Let's see what we were created for. Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. So this is the Lord talking to Israel. This is the Lord talking to Israel through Moses. Check this out. Now therefore, if he will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. See that all the earth belongs to the Lord. Now he, the Lord is talking to Israel through Moses. See, this is what's called the first covenant and the first testimony through the first testator. The first testimony, Moses is now testifying in a court to Israel that the Lord is saying this to you. So Moses is the testator bringing the testimony. And he is testifying that this testament that I give you is sealed by the Lord. So he says, if you will do what I tell you, and you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. So the problem and the question is all people. Then he says, for all the earth is mine. So he's going to put Israel above all people. Now check this out, what we were created for. Come on. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Bang. A what? A kingdom of priests. So we were created. Our purpose was to be king, male ruler, dumb, which is dominion or domain, meaning a place of rulership, of priests. Come on. And a holy nation. And an holy nation. See that? Not the other nations, which are considered the Gentiles. Not the other nations. We are the chosen people of the Lord. The Israelites, the 13 tribes, they're the chosen people of the Lord. They're the holy nation. And their purpose that they were created for was to be a holy nation. Okay, that's why it says, these, come on. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, what were we created for? Let's go, now that that was, some, what is our dominion then? So let's go into the book of Ezra. Let's go into the book of 2nd Ezra. Right, let's see, let's see our dominion that was created for us. What is our domain? That was created for us. Let's go into the book of Second Ezra, right? And let's go to the seventh chapter. So now we're going in, into the apocrypha. And what is our dominion? King is the male rulership. Dumb comes from the word domain or dominion. What was created for us? For us to dominate, for us to rule. Okay. So, second address, the second address, the seventh chapter, and started the first verse. Check this out. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night before, before. And he said unto me, up, Estrus, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my father. 
Then he then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? And if he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? Now, what the Lord is saying is, the reason why things is done this way is so that we can learn experience. That the nation of Israel can learn experience. He's teaching us. He's teaching us how to rule through experience. Look at it. He says, up Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to speak unto me. And I said, speak on my Lord. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance was narrow like a river. So now you want to achieve, you want to get to the sea. But now you got to fight through to get there because the entranceway is tight. He says, who can go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it if he went not through the narrow? How could he come onto the broad? So if you don't go through the trials and tribulations that we are going through, how are you going to learn? How are you going to realize what you've been through? That's why you had to go through the wicked, which we're going through now. We're going through the negative. We're going through the negative. The Lord is putting us through the negative so we can understand how to rule in the positive, how to be great in the positive. Read on. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field, and it's full of all good things. The entrance there, thereof is narrow, and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if it were a fire on the right hand, and on the left, a deep water. See that? So he's not giving us anything easy. You got to work for this. He's not giving us anything easy. You got to work for this, man. You understand? You got to fall and get back up. He said, yeah, there's a city there. It's there for you, but you're not getting it easy. You're not getting it easy. Read on. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be one man go there at once. See that? So this this path is so small, only one man can go there at once. So it's it's not going to be a group thing where everybody's growing in with their little religions and so forth. No, it's going to be you. Each individual is going to be tried. You understand? This is not a gang thing. This is not a um a, a, a one west madness. You understand what I'm saying? Or your different religion that you believe in. No, that's not how it's going down. It's you individually. So you're going to rise and fall by yourself if you make it into the kingdom of heaven. If you make it into the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be on you. It's not going to be your mother, your grandfather, all these things. No, it's going to be on you. Read on. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it. So now, if we never pass the danger, so all the chastening, all the trials and tribulations, we have to pass that. Each and every person has to pass that. Whatever struggles in your life, are you going to hold on and believe in the Lord? Are you going to work through and win your tests? That's the danger. Come on. How shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Now listen to this well. What is our domain? What is our domain? What is, what is it that we were created for to rule? Come on. Even so also is Israel's portion. Right. What is our portion? Because for their sakes. For Israel's I, sakes. Read that again. For Israel's sake. Come on. For Israel's sake. So the entire planet Earth and everything in it, all the gold, all the silver, all the wealth, all the people 
belong to the nation of Israel. They, it is us. We are the children of the Lord, and he created the world and everything in it for our sake. That is our domain for us to teach them the way of the Lord. So that is the dominion when in Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6, it said, um, For you shall be a king, them, of priests. See that? So the priesthood came when we got the title Israel. The priesthood came when we got the title Israel because that made us the go-between between the heavenly realm and the physical realm of men. We were in between. Okay, we were supposed to be in between. We're the mediator in between the nation of Israel. So this is our land, the entire earth, not just the land of Israel, the entire planet Earth, everywhere where everybody is, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Southeast Asia, Africa, everything belongs to the nation of Israel because it was created for us. Read that piece one more time, the whole thing. And I said, Bang, see that? So what is our portion? Our portion is the world. Because the world was made for our sakes. That's what the Lord is telling you in the Apocrypha, in Second Ezra, the 7th chapter and the 10th verse. Come on. And when Adam transgressed my statues... Now, I am Adam. I am Adam. Okay? The word Adam means taken from the earth. The word Adam means taken from the earth. So when I transgress, when I disobeyed the Lord's law... Right, which was not to touch the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Come on. Then was decreed that now is done. Uh -huh. Come on. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. So there it is. He's giving you the answer why we're not in the kingdom of heaven. Why are we in this position? Why are we in COVID-19? Why are we dealing with the so-called white man? Because now everything has become destiny that we have to fight for everything to get back to the kingdom. Why is it taking so long? That's we have to fight for it. Okay? We have to fight for it. So, um, let's see that we are going to get back to kingdom. Let's see that we are going to get back to kingdom. Let's go into the book of Isaiah now. The 14th chapter. Let's see that this is going to be accomplished. Let's go into the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter. So we're breaking it down for you, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. This is going to be accomplished. Let's see that we are going to get back to the kingdom. And we also going to see what's going to happen when we rule the world now. When we rule the world. Let's go, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. First verse. So the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Bang. The Lord will have mercy on who? On Jacob. Jacob represents the nation of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel when you go back to Genesis, the 27th chapter. It explains the Genesis, the 32nd chapter. It, it explains that. So let me get that and break that down. Why is Jacob's name changed to Israel? So now for you to understand, you got to stay with the scriptures. Okay? Everything is the scriptures. So let's jump back now to Genesis. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. I'm going to read that. And the 24th verse down. Right? So when you go to Genesis, Isaiah 40, 14, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Right? You got to understand the word Jacob means to supplant. The word Jacob means to supplant. Now, the Lord is going to take away that name and give him the name that is rightfully his, which is rightfully his, which is going to be Israel. Now, the word Israel is going to give you the meaning. When, when a man says, I'm an Israelite, number one, he must have a tribe that he's from. Okay? There's 13 tribes. So no man can say that they're Israelite. 
if they're not telling you what tribe they're from according to the Bible, that's first thing again. And that's a whole different topic. I'm not even dealing with that as of this instance. So, Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. What is the word Jacob and why does why there was the name changed? This is Genesis 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Now, this man was an angel. How do we know that? Let's go with scripture. Hosea 12, verse 4. So let's jump to Hosea 12, verse 4. Taking our time, Hosea, Amos, Hosea 12, verse 4. Now check this out. How do we know that this was an angel? So when you read or read down, I'm going to start at the second verse. The Lord also have a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense it? He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength, he had power with the Lord. So who is this? This is um, Jacob when the twins was in the womb. Listen to it again. He took his brother by the heel. So when Esau was coming out of the heel, when Esau was coming out of the womb, Jacob snatched him by the heel. So see how Hosea is jumping back to Genesis, that story in Genesis, the 25th chapter. Excuse me. Now, the fourth verse, yea, he, um, Jacob, he had power over the angel and prevailed. See that? He had power over the angel and prevailed. So now, what angel is it talking about? Jump back now to Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And Jacob was left alone. And they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So now we know that this man was the angel. But how did Jacob, how did Jacob have power to wrestle with an angel? Because the God force was in Jacob. The God force was in Jacob, just like the God force was in Father Abraham, just like the God force was in Father Isaac. The God force was in them. Okay? So that's, he didn't know the God force was in him, but it manifested at its appointed time. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. See that? So only a God could come down and bless a God. Only a God can come down and bless a God and give him something greater. Thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. Now he's going to explain to him the royalty that's coming down. For as a prince, when you say you are Israelite, you are a prince. Has thou power with the Lord and with men and has prevailed. So when men say that they're Israelites and you're not acting as princes, how then are you Israelites? How then are you Israelites? For as a prince, see that? Thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. So now we got the understanding. So what does the prince mean? So... Basically, what it's talking about, I'm going to use these two, two markers. So, if this represents the two levels, okay, this is the heavenly level, and this is the earthly level. Israel now is in between. As a prince, we are the mediator or the priest in Exodus 19, 5, and 6. We are the mediator or the priests go between between the Lord and uh, the earthly realm. That's what we were created for. That's what we were created for. 
So now you got the understanding of what it means to be an Israelite. Now you got the understanding as to what it means to be an Israelite. So now we're jumping back to um, Isaiah 14 chapter. Isaiah 14 chapter. So now we're jumping back to Isaiah the 14 chapter. So now we explain that. So read on again. For Read the first verse again. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. See that? And the Lord will yet choose us. Now why does it say the Lord will yet choose Israel? It's really simple. What happened was with all the religions and all the nations that are fighting right now, it looks like the nation of Israel is just done away with. Everybody's reading the Bible and saying their philosophy and their religion and their concept is what's going to be chosen. Jehovah Witness, Islam, this group, that group, five percenters, nation of this, the, the, whatever, Hare Krishna, whatever. So read that piece again and... No, and will yet choose, will yet yet choose Israel. Israel. See, you must see that. The Lord is saying, and no, I don't care what y'all think. I don't care what y'all think. Because I will yet choose Israel. See that? So I, the Lord don't care what Jehovah Witness think. The Lord don't care what so-called Jews think. He don't care what Russians think. He don't care what the Chinese think. He don't care what no nation thinks or what any group thinks. He knows that his people, when this is all said and done, his people is going back to the top. Come on. And will set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So now the strangers is the other nations. Okay. Because he's picking us up from wherever we are. And he's setting us back in our own land, which is Israel. Come on. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Like they're cleaving to us now. They're cleaving to our records. They're saying that they're the chosen people of the Lord. You got the Ethiopians saying that they're the Jews. You got all these different philosophies. You got the, the, the white man saying that he's the, 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 the Christians. You got the white man saying that he's the Jews. Okay, so these people are all cleaving to our records. They're cleaving to us. Okay, read on. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. For servants and handmaids. See that? So, the Lord is showing you, number one, if you understand what the Lord is saying right here, he says, and the people shall take them, the Israelites shall take them, the other nations, and bring them to their place, which is to Israel. And the house of Israel, meaning the tribes now, the house of Israel is now all the brothers, which is the clans of, of the tribes. So Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Gad, um, Issachar, Reuben, Naphtali, all of them, we're, gonna, we're the house of Israel. Okay. We're going to bring them to our place and we shall possess them. What does it mean, possess? I'm going to own them just like I own this marker. I can do with it whatever I want. So if I pop it open or I close it, I possess it. I own it. It belongs to me now. Okay? And we shall possess them in the land of the Lord for what? For servants and handmaids. So they're going to serve us. They're going to serve us. They're going to be our servants and our handmaids, just like we was their servants and their handmaids. Come on. And they shall take the captives, whose captives they were. See that? So a lot of a lot of different religion Israelites out here now, Christian Israelites, think that these nations are going to slide. But this is a major prophecy from Isaiah. This is coming from the Lord. They're going into captivity. They're going, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. So we were captive under them, and we're still captive under them right now. Whose captives they were, come on. 
and they shall rule over their oppressors. See that? And we shall rule over our oppressors. So this is the future coming kingdom for us, which is going to be, we're going to be in heaven. Where? Upon the earth. Who's going to bring it? Read on. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. See that? So in this land of Babylon where we in, we was made to have fear. We was made to have sorrow. We was made to have hard bondage. You got to get up and work where you was made to serve, you, you, you know, for cheap money. They don't even want to give you the money that they stole from you, reparations. They got you in ghettos and projects and all these different things. You, you serving. You serving. You either being killed, you, they have your brothers on, on the concentration camps down at the border, in jails. You ain't even talking about that. You're talking about Black Lives Matter. You're not even talking about that. Those are black people. You ain't even talking about that. Black Lives Matter. So the Lord is going to break that bondage. So it says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. This is what we exist in right now. From thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Come on. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. So America is the king of Babylon. The Edomites is the king of Babylon. Come on. And say, how have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. See that? So the golden city is New York City. The golden city is New York City. This is supposed to be the land of opportunity, the home of the brave and the free and all that. But here we're dealing with oppression, with, with all kind of police oppression and all kinds of madness systematic racism and so forth like that the golden city would the, the, you, you know everybody wants to come here and pass through the golden gates and have a great life the golden city they 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 think that the streets is made out of gold okay so how is this going to come down let's go into the book of daniel we're going to close on this let's go into the book of daniel who's going to bring this for us who's going to take us home Who's going to take us home? Let's go into the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. Let's go into the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter and the ninth verse. We, we're going to close on this, Daniel, the seventh chapter, as to how we're going to get this kingdom. Okay? Daniel, the seventh chapter and the ninth verse. Come on. Sorry, me it's all right. Take your time, sis. Take your time. I thank you for helping me. Just got to get fast with them fingers. Call a two-finger woman. Ah. <laughs> I got you. Daniel 7, chapter... Verse 9. I'll be held till the thrones were cast down. All right, hold, hold on one second. So he says, I'll be held till the thrones were cast down. So now you got to know what thrones that he's talking about. What thrones exactly is he talking about? The, the thrones that he's talking about is all the rulerships of this world. Okay? And they have thrones. Everybody that's ruling, look at Donald Trump. Look at Elizabeth Warren. Donald Trump, Elizabeth Warren. They got thrones. They Their thrones is going to be cast down. Look at Kamala Harris. She's got a throne. Look at Eric Adams. He's got a throne. Look at all the gangbangers, all the drug dealers. They all got thrones. Okay, look at Mayor de Blasio, he's got a throne. So all these thrones, kings, rulerships, pastors, ministers, all these people that are sitting on thrones, CEOs, corporations, they're all going to be thrown down when the Lord steps back. I beheld when the thrones were cast down, come on. And the ancient of days did sit. Another name for the Most High is the what? The ancient of days. Is the ancient of days, another name for the Most High, so a lot of cats be fighting about the most high's name another name for the most high is the ancient of days man the ancient of days here it is in the bible i don't argue about the most high's name there's two names i got for him the i am that i am and the ancient of days or the creator or the most high that's it as simple as that or the lord i don't go into all these 
well, this name and that name. No, this is what the Bible said. The Lord said, in the end, he shall give us a name. He shall give us, give us a, a language that we'll know his name then. Come on. Whose garment was white as snow. So, so the Ancient of Days, the Most High, he had a garment on. Come on. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. Like the pure wool, like a black man. A black man got woolly hair. See, I had to just cut my hair the other day. You know, because it was getting hard winter time. I mean, summertime, the sweat and stuff like that. But I got that woolly hair. I got that woolly texture here. Come on. His throne was like fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. See that? And his wheels as burning fire, man. Because energy comes from the Lord. The Lord is a being of pure energy. He's a spirit that creates energy. So when, whenever you're talking about the Lord, the aspect of the Lord is energy. He's pure energy. He don't go to sleep. He don't get tired. Energy don't get tired. He created all energy in the universe. Things you see, energy you see, energy you don't see. Chemical energy. Any type of energy that exists, he created it. Come on. So the judgment was set talking about the Bible, okay? The judgment is already set as to the punishments that's coming down for these nations and them believing in Satan with their religion. So the judgment is going to be set for the things that they have done. Read on. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. So the horn is, is, is America. America came out of the other... Uh, the, America came out of the other three horns, which is Britain, France, and Spain. Okay, so the, 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 the little horn is America. America came from out of that with the, with the American Revolution and then the French-American War. That's how the, the Eastern Seaboard formed up. So that's history you got to know. I'll break that down at some point. Come on. So the burning flame is going to be the third world's war. The beast is America. The burning flame is going to be the third world's war. This place is going to be destroyed. Okay? So that's the burning flame. Come on. As concerning the rest of the beast. The rest of the beast is the rest of the nations that's going to be around. The Chinese, the Japanese, the Africans in Africa, wherever they at, that's still alive, that the Lord is allowing them to be alive. The beast, the Lord considers them to be beasts. Okay, come on. They had their dominion taken away. So they're not going to be ruling anymore. They're not going to be ruling anymore. They're not going to be ruling anymore. They had their dominion. So their dominion is now. This is prophecy. See, this is why the Bible supersedes the world. Your dominion, these nations' dominion, what they're fighting for is right now. But now destiny is being read about them right now. Come on. Yet their lives were prolonged. Come on. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. Ah, here comes the Christ. Another name for Christ is the what? Son of Man. Come on. Came with the clouds of heaven. The clouds of heaven is the ships, the chariots that they that the angels travel in. All throughout the Bible, there's mention of the chariots. Come on. So now, for you to understand what happened, you would have to go in the book, in, into the book of Acts, the first chapter. When he rose from the grave, the, the, the ships, the chariots came down and picked them up in the book of Acts, the first chapter in the ninth verse. The chariots came down and picked them up. So when the chariots picked them up, they took him back to heaven. And now this is what you're reading when he came back to heaven now. So now he's coming before the Ancient of Days. Come on. Shall not be destroyed. 
So we closing out, right? We're doing pretty good. We're closing out. So this is a future when the Savior steps back. We're going to the top, and you're going to read that. We got five minutes left. You're going to read that in this same chapter. But it's also showing you his dominion. So there is going to be no change forever and ever and ever. Once he steps back to the rulership, there's going to be no change. Nobody's ever taken him down again. Nobody's ever. That's it. That's the heavenly kingdom. This wicked kingdom is done. Okay. Let's prove that this wicked kingdom is going to be done. Let's go to Apocrypha right quick. Let's go to Apocrypha right quick. Let's go to Wisdom. Let's go to 2nd Ezra right quick. 2nd Ezra. Let's see who's going to bring this down. 2nd Ezra is the 6th chapter. Let's go straight to the 8th verse. Let's see what kingdom that we're in. We've got exactly 4 minutes. 2nd Ezra is the 6th chapter and the 8th verse. Come on. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of stop, him. Stop right there. So see how that's jumping back to Genesis? Because these are the two major players in the Bible on the earthly side. Good and evil represented between two nations. Good and evil represented between two nations, Esau and Jacob. So Esau is a so-called white man, European, Caucasian, Edomite. That's who he is. Read. Jacob's hand held first the heels of Esau. So when we was coming out the womb, we snatched his heel like, no, you're not going nowhere. Wherever you go, we locked on to you. That's why we are here in this land right now. He's here, we're here. Come on. For Esau is the end of the world. See, so he's going to bring this world down. This is his world for him to bring down through nuclear warfare. Come on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So now we're going to bring the second kingdom, which is the, the, the godly kingdom, into this world. Jacob represents Israel, which represents Christ. We're going to bring that in, into this kingdom. So now jump back to Daniel now. The same seventh chapter. Let's close out. We, we're doing good. We got a couple of minutes. Now watch. Daniel 7, verse 26. Check this out. See that? So the judgment shall sit. What is written in the Bible? There's judgments in the Bible. They shall sit against the nations. Come on, and Esau. And they shall take away his dominion to consume it and to destroy it unto the end. Check it out. Come on. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven Come on. Shall, be given, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Bang! So through Christ and the angels, they're going to take down Esau's kingdom, and they're going to raise Israel up. So look what it says. And the kingdom and the, the dominion, see how it comes back to dominion, Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6, and the dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom, how great this kingdom shall be, which is the second kingdom under the whole heaven, the heaven meaning on the under the earth, I mean in the earth, okay? We're not going to be um, out somewhere like people believe that you're going to die and go to some heaven, right? Under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So now to close, who is the people of the saints of the Most High? Let's prove that. Let's go in the book of Psalms, right? I'm going to read this right quick. I, I got it. Uh, Psalms right quick. Let's go to Psalms 147. I, I want to stay directly. Man, running out of time. Psalms 149. Um, Psalms 148, 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. A people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So the children of Israel is the saints of the Most High. So with that, um, it shows you whose kingdom in Daniel 7 verse 27. It shall be given to the saints of the Most High, which is talking about Israel, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions, all nations shall serve and obey him. So with that, I say peace. This is Brother Shum's Corner.
Um, this is a breakdown piece.